Hey guys, in this video, let us learn how we can use self-hoster runners with GitHub Actions. Before we start, a quick introduction about myself. So this is Swaminathan Vetri. I work as an architect at Maersk. I'm also on Microsoft MVP and the developer technologies. I tweeted at the rate SP Swaminathan. Uh, my GitHub repositories are available at, at the rate SP Swaminathan. Uh, my YouTube channel is youtube.com slash Swaminathan Vetri. And I also write technical blogs at swaminathanvetri.in. So the agenda of this session is going to be this. So let's start with an understanding of what are self-hosted runners and let's understand why we need them. And let's also try to understand what are the differences between the GitHub runners versus self-hosted runners and when not to use self-hosted runners, right? And then finally, we'll end up with a demo while setting up the self-hosted runners. Let's see how we can configure it, how we can run a job in a self-hosted runner and also let's finally remove the self-hosted runner. All right, so what are self-hosted runners, All right? So as the name suggests, you can host your own runners and then you can use your own machines with the operating system of your choice and then you can run the GitHub actions on those machines. That's what is typically a self-hosted runner is, All right? And how does that work? So there is a there is an open source application called Actions Runner. So that is being that has to be that is the one which is trying to establish the communication between the machine in which your runner is running versus the one on the on the GitHub side. But why do we need self-hosted runners in first place? Right. So with GitHub runners, right, you don't have full control over the operating system or the tools. Is what is there? Let's say, for example, if you're going to use an Ubuntu latest version, uh, which is managed by GitHub, you don't have a control over which version or so. Right. So if you want to have more control over the hardware and the operating system and the tools, for example, the .NET version or whatever, if you want to control everything, then self-hosted runners are a good option for you. And it also bring, gives the flexibility for us to use the operating system, which are not supported by or not provided by GitHub runners. Right? So of course, all the major operating systems like Mac OS, Windows or Linux are available with GitHub runners. But if in case you're looking for any specific version of Linux, which is not there or so, then you could very well uh, use a self-hosted runner. And what are the differences between these two, right? So obviously the GitHub runners are something which are managed and maintained by GitHub. Right. But self-hosted runners, it's something which we have to take care of everything, right? So only the uh, only the GitHub runner application is something which is maintained or which is created by GitHub. The rest all the operating system, the hardware and softwares and all these um, um, tool sets and everything has to be run by us. And talking about the updates perspective, since it, uh, since the GitHub runners are completely managed by GitHub, all the operating system updates or the uh, tools updates and everything else is taken care of by them. But here only the runner application, which is the bridge between uh, our own machine and the GitHub is taken care of by GitHub. But all other OS updates, let's say if you want to update your Linux uh, Ubuntu version, or if you want to update your Mac OS version, so on and so forth, that everything has to be taken care of by us. And the only the one of the striking differences is with GitHub runners, every time a workflow is run, right, it is going to spin up a new instance. So that means it's a clean instance which is being given. Uh, but in the case of self-hosted runners, that's not necessarily the case. It is it's the same instance which is being you reused for each and every workflow run. So if you want to maintain states between these different uh, runs or so, then self-hosted runners are much uh, beneficial for us. And one other example where we could use is about the Docker builds, right? So where if you want to pre-cache all your Docker images or the different layers of your Docker images, then the self-hosted runners are much helpful there. And uh, from the pricing perspective, so with GitHub plan, what are the free minutes you get? That's what you would uh, you can use initially uh, when you use GitHub runners. Uh, but once you exhaust those minutes, it's all about per minute basis. So if let's say if you're building, if you're running your workflows for 200 minutes, then you will be charged for that particular minutes. But in the case of self-hosted runners, there is no um, running cost or build cost associated with the number of workflows or the duration of the workflow execution. But what you end up paying is the maintenance cost for the infrastructure or the operating system or the tools and so on and so forth. And when not to use self-hosted runners, right? So though it brings a lot of flexibility for us, it also comes with a caveat, right? So if, especially with the public repositories, it's best not to use self-hosted runners because there's a possibility possibility that some of the workflows could also run a malicious code, malicious code, and that could you know hamper the um, self-hosted runner, and also it also it also enables access to the machine's network environment, right? Because you are enabling communication between GitHub where the code is uh, hosted and the machine where you are 
uh, trying to run the run the runner here so there is a possibility that the access to this machine there is a possibility that if there is malicious code is there it can access these machines environment and potentially it could have some security risks and you might also end up persisting unwanted dangerous data in the machine so so in this for ex so uh, especially for the public repositories it's it's better not to run these self hosted runners and we like we can go with the github hosted runners if you're if you have full control over your management or if you're having your github enterprise or team or so on and so forth then you can have your um, self hosted runners available and then you can set up at the organization level or also you can set up at the individual repositories level so with that let's go go to the demo okay so for the demo we are going to use a basic .NET core application so i've chosen the blazor server template application and um, so we're going to set up the github workflow for that for this application and enable the continuous integration build for this .NET core application and this workflow would be running in, in my local machine instead of running it from a github hosted runner right and so if you're completely new to github actions so check out my other videos for the introduction to github actions and also understand how you can do the azure app service deployment and azure containers de container service deployment and everything All right so uh, let me quickly show the demo of what this application looks like and then we can go ahead and start setting up the workflows for this so let, i'm doing a dot net run and when i browse this so it just comes up and this is a basic dot uh, net core based blazor server application um, so let's go ahead and uh, start creating the actions for this right so i've already pushed this um, code into the repository and obviously it's a private repository here uh, for all the reasons i mentioned in the presentation so i've not enabled as a public um, so first thing is to set up the runner right so you have to go to the settings and then if you go ahead and click on the actions so you get you you can see the options to add a hosted runner so there's a segment called self-hosted runners so where you can go click on this add runner button and then we can we'll have the instructions to add the self-hosted runner here so as we can see this supports for all these three different operating systems since i'm on my windows machine i'm going to choose windows and i've already done the download part so what i'm going to run now is only the configuration part so i'm going to copy this script from here and then go back to my terminal and paste the command this would now enable me uh, to you know add my machine as a runner into the github so yeah so the name of the runner so i'm going to make it uh, swami dash winton that's my machine and any of the labels by default it adds the labels like self hosted so i'm going to say swami self hosted okay and now that completes the runner part and the work folder i'm going to leave it as a default so it's under works and uh, underscore work and the next thing is to check if you want to make this runner as a service so the advantage of running making it running as a service is that it will always be running in the background you don't have to worry about having the terminal open or not so i'm going to say yes for this and the user account i'm going to leave it as network service and yeah all right so now it would have uh, set up the runner is uh, basically up and running in my machine just to confirm we can go to the services services.msc and then we can go ahead and check if it's available yeah, i think there is one available now so as you can see github actions runner sv swami nathan ga self hosted runner demos for me winton so this is my repository and this is the name of the runner what i have done and it's already running so now this should uh, that means the runner is now connected to github so let's go back to uh, the github portal and then let's start creating the workflow so when i come here and i go to actions so to set up any new action click on this action tab and then you can see all the different templates available or you can also start from the scratch so let, let us see if there is something which is available for for a doc uh, for a dot net build all right so i'm going to click on this more and there must be something for dot net so this is desktop okay yeah so there is one for dot net core so i'm going to say um, set up this workflow so now what this brings is it's going to create a yaml file within the under dot github workflows folder and this is the steps what it is going to run right, so just to quickly summarize so it's trying to do on push of these or on pull on creating any pull request for these branches this is this part is like the trigger here right if, you, if it's not very clear uh, so this is where this segment is where uh, this is the trigger of this workflow and this is a job job name is build and it's going to run on the ubuntu latest so that's the that's that's what means it's this is basically a github hosted runner and we're going to run it on ubuntu right and these are the steps what, what we're going to do first check out the uh, code base and then we're setting up the dot net core version 
uh, and then we are trying to you know um, and then we are trying to install the dependencies by doing .NET restore and then it is trying to do a .NET build and .NET test right um, in my machine I have 3.1.3.1 so I am going to change the number here and by default when you may whatever the yaml file you get it it is going to have your um, github host runners so here is where we are going to use our tab our tag or the label so i'm going to say run runs on self hosted and do a preview and now start commit yeah added github workflow file and say commit Okay, now if you go back to the actions, it should ideally trigger this particular um, action. And now when you go and click on the build, it's trying to set up the job. So yeah, so as you can see here, it says, SV, okay, this is syncing the repository. And it's it's the, the contents of this particular folder that is trying to run in here. It's the actions runner underscore work. So that's the repository place where I've given in my machine. So now this is getting uh, triggered in this machine. Let's give it a couple of minutes for this to complete. Yeah, I think it's it's almost done. Yeah, so the job is complete and it ran in 51 seconds, right? So if you can go down to the build, so as we can see, this is where basically the, the, the build outputs and everything is there. Right. So if you go back to the folder in my machine under GitHub actions, under the actions runner folder where I've configured the runner, so underscore work is where you see this GSL Forcer runner demo. So that's what we have it now. So if you go open that, this is where all the repository or the entire repository is checked out here and the build and uh, build has happened here. Right. You can also go ahead and see all the actions, whatever is mentioned in the, in the workflow uh, check, checked out here into this particular folder. So from, from from here on, for every other uh, um, workflow which is going to run, it is not going to download the actions again. It will try to reuse from this particular folder. So now going back, so this is summary. So if you now go back to the settings, you should be able to see the runner mentioned there. Go to actions, and you should be seeing Swami Winton as a self-hosted runner, and it's kind of idle now. So when we are when the workflow is running, it would have shown us uh, running or whatever. All right so that's easy that's how easy it is to create a self-hosted runner and then attach it into github and then we can you know configure the workflows for your self-hosted runners and if you want to remove it you have got two options so one you can go back to the terminal and then say config.command and then say remove and you need to provide the token which we've used uh, when you had provisioned this particular runner so i'm gonna paste that token here and let me stop it oops okay I think there's some issue with the remove command. Okay. So if if, if otherwise the other option is if you want to completely remove this entire um, runner from the uh, repository, you can just go click on these three dots and then say remove. And that's gonna remove your entire self hosted runner. Force remove this runner. And done so that's it it's gone so now after this this particular action file is going to fail obviously because we don't have a self hosted runner there so you might need to go ahead and update this workflow to use the ubuntu latest or whatever the new um, tag or the label what we're going to go give the runners all right so yeah so that's pretty much what i wanted to show so we just started with a basic dot and code application we created an uh, workflow and we made it run on the local on the self hosted runner and we kind of tied on the runner as well. Um, thank you so much for watching this.